everything that I thought of her has been confirmed. Like, absolutely. What What are you smiling no, about, bro? Nothing. No, nothing. Go ahead. You like her gas timings, though. I love her gas timings, <laughs> bro. And what she does with the gas is so brilliant. I love her ZVZ. It's actually one of the most beautiful things ever. We're uh, actually going to go into this, though. It's a PVT instead. Why don't you go ahead and introduce the players in uh, the gauntlet? Axlev is the person currently holding the gauntlet here in the North American Starlink edition of the King of the Hill, of course, being our blue protos on the right bottom side of this map. And he's playing against Ruth Massa, our Terran player. And I look forward to this game, uh, Andre. I really look forward to it, certainly because Axe is such a crazy player. Uh, even though, as you said, he can roll with the Starlight, uh, his range of strategies is pretty wide. Uh, you will see him do funky stuff most of the time. And I look forward to watching his PvT, because mm. I haven't seen all that much from him lately. I know he's been streaming a lot, but as I pointed out, I was traveling, so I wasn't really able to catch up with his stream. Yeah, but sure. I did enjoy it in the past when I watched. Very entertaining and um, useful stream as well. You can learn a lot from it. Now, I have a question, because uh, like I talk to a lot of Terrans these days, and uh, basically, every single matchup is is horrid for them. That's what you know. A lot of them yeah. say. Uh, wh how do you think the current state of PVT is? Like where where both these players are going? Well, I'm starting to feel that Terrans are getting a better read on the matchup again. I really felt that for a month or two, it looked very tough for Terrans against top Protoss players. Mm -hmm. It just felt it felt like Protoss was always safe and always had that sort of invincible army. But I'm starting to feel that certainly the Korean Terrans are starting to understand the matchup even better than they used to do in the past, mm -hmm. and now know how to punish greedy processes and the moment that Protoss is starting to become less greedy it's suddenly a lot easier uh, for Terran to play those long out macro games because that super invincible Protoss army doesn't uh, suddenly show up out of nowhere it takes a while to get there yeah. like I watched TSL today and Mana is, 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 oh is a fantastic God. player of course because he won Dreamhack recently he always has good runs just got top 8 at Asus Rock as well um, uh, I saw him play today in the TSL against uh, Hack, I believe it was and Heck just played fantastic, he made it look easy. Demolished like he read every mana. situation so well. Demolished him completely. It's yeah. I it's really quite surprising and, and what it's been actually leaning more towards is punishing uh, the two to three base timing, which that's what yeah. we saw in like the beta, and then we just assumed Protosses that um, knew it was coming would defend it easily. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we kind of, or Terrence kind of lent away from that and started going for more, you know, three base styles, getting really greedy three base styles. And I think that's being read really easily. And Protosses have, you know, kind of just defended against that, but have stopped defending against like seven racks uh, off of two base. You know, exactly. something crazy. And that's where a lot of Protosses these days are actually falling into that. Yeah, but, it, but it's also the, the, the point where Protoss goes for the third base and drops Double Forge and wants to get Colossus. Exactly, yeah. Like, how can you ever really be ready against a standard two-base push? And I felt that one thing that I've seen a lot in the past, uh, of course this really depends on each game and every game is different, but I, what I've seen a lot in the past is where I felt that Terran players could literally just run across the map and kill the Protoss. Instead, they try to drop and fly it right into the only four Stalkers that were actually on the map. <laughs> and I feel that Terran players right now are starting to realize that, hey, sometimes you actually don't have to drop. Well, Masa is doing a very good job, by the way, with his first Marine. He yeah. scouted that it was Nexus first over here for x left. And he's being as annoying as possible, but we saw that he followed it up with a very quick command center as well. Yeah. But uh, do you know what I mean? Haven't you seen those games in the past as well, where yeah. Terrans are far ahead and they try to drop? It's like, you can actually just straight up attack and win. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's something so weird. Normally people are like, oh, well, they have sentries right there. Yeah, but you have medevacs. Yeah. You can just attack and then lift up, and because the stalkers are so far out of place, just keep pushing forward, maybe even snipe the sentries. There are so many different positions where Terrans are really underutilizing their, their greatest strengths, which are the medevacs. Yeah, and just that DPS early mid-game when Protoss has no Colossus, has no... Uh, uh, high Templars, or most of the time doesn't even have Blink or Charge. Mm -hmm. And that's really a scary moment for Protoss players. Now, look at this. Masa is playing it so, so weird, going for mm -hmm. a delayed Stargate tech, or Starport tech. Now, this is normally to punish those Protosses that go straight for Twilight Council after they fast expand and don't get any sort of tech. It's unfortunate for Masa. I, I really don't like this style, honestly. Is he going... Whoa, okay, this wow. tech lab is weird, so he's doing like a pseudo one 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 but off of two base, so it's going to be extended. But still, I, I don't like this style too much just because it is very build order countery. Yeah, this is very weird. Uh, actually, it's going to be cloak bench as well. X is not yeah. paying attention. Uh, the stalker is taking a lot of damage, also some real damage. Uh, only 27 HP remaining, uh, but he's, he's on top bold. of it right now. Yeah. 
But the Banshee coming out here, I really feel like it's going to do minimal damage. Axav will be able to get Observers up oh. in time, although he's not I'm producing not off his sure. Robots, it so might actually, be, since he's dropping a Robo, a Robo Bay right now, I actually think what we are going to see is maybe one Observer and then an Immortal, and then Colossus. And if there's only one Observer, Cloak Banshees will actually still be yeah. able to do uh, a reasonable amount of damage. See right now he's pushing out just ever so slightly, but still it's weird that Axlov hasn't like really, really prioritized this this one observer to come out. Yeah. Yes, now he's finally chrono boosting now. Because he's been so blind. He saw yeah, the command center exactly. and he's just expecting three or four wrecks and he's already thinking way further than he should be thinking right now. He's gonna drop the additional gates and he's not using the robotics facility. It's gonna be only a single observer. That observer is gonna be completely out of position. Mm -hmm. uh, this is gonna turn out so good for Massa. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for him, uh, it's going to do one of two things, either cancel the Colossus, which most likely it's going to do now, that sucks so badly, uh, but yeah, <laughs> I see it, I see it. I'm confused. It's I know that the Banshee is entering the main base of Xlab, but I just really want to see what happens to this bunker. Why, Masa? Right, I'll tell you guys what's going on, the Banshee is going to pick up a couple kills right here, and he does it actually cancel the Colossus. What happened to the bunker, bro? It <laughs> does. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's 75 minerals that he just lost. Uh, observer terrible. will be out in 5 to 6 seconds, but already 10 probes have fallen. The probes were not even mining, so it's also mining time. Now this Banshee finally falls, yeah. but he killed 13 probes. That's Jeez. so good when you want to play the strategy that he wants to. And the best thing is, he follows this up with that uh, Soda 101, as you said. And the thing is, x right now is worried about Cloak, so he's going to use 2, 3 more, uh, or at least one more observer after this. Yeah. So he's not even producing any units which can fight against the 1-1-1. He needs the Colossus out ASAP yeah. because that's the only unit that can actually defend against this at this point because he hasn't really invested into his gateway tech. So right now, if he does not get those Colossus, he's straight up dead. There it is, finally. Colossus is coming out here. They're so important to actually defend against the Marine. Uh, that Stalker, uh, the bench actually picked up a Stalker. Uh, but right. the observer was in position for X left, so that's all that the uh, Benji will be able to do for now. Twilight Council is going down as well, and I'm so surprised. X, do you actually think you have time to get charge out or something? Well, oh, actually, another command center is going up. Well, Masa is playing a really weird style here. X left did not scout it though. Maybe Masa is doing the style where you just get mass siege tanks, Vikings, and ghosts. That would be awesome, bro. But do you know how gas intensive it is? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, I know, but if you have the <laughs> you, if you have the whole game to actually mine out the map, then you're fine. Just never attack. Happy style. Ghost tank raven. Happy style, bro. Happy style. Yeah. You know what I'm talking it's about. It's like 40 ghosts. Yeah. 30 Vikings and a handful of Marines and a, few <laughs> and a couple of medivacs. <laughs> okay. So how do exactly do I engage this army? <laughs> <laughs> everything gets EMP'd. Everything gets sniped. Everything gets just slaughtered. It's the best thing. Yeah, really interesting place out here for Massa. Uh, I'm not, you know, I always, it's my opinion that sea tanks have a, a quite a substantial diminishing return. Like, they just get far, far weaker as you go on into the game just because yeah. there's so many units. And um, the reinforcements are going to be bigger as well, and it's so yeah. slow to reinforce with tanks. So if you lose a fight, you're going to end up losing everything. There's no retreating well. And because you get so many siege tanks in the beginning, that is a lot of gas. That means the majority of your army is either Hellions or Marines. Hellions and Marines at that endgame stage are not the most, well, uh, I got to be careful with this, but at this point in time, they're not the most cost-efficient quality unit, uh, especially when you're up against Colossus, Guardian Shield, etc. X is just getting everything right now as he's getting Storm, he's researching charge, so he was actually right with dropping the Twilight Council when he did, which I still think was a super ballsy decision. Now he's gonna warp into the second port as well. But what he saw with his Observer, it looked so much, like you said, like just a 1-1-1 out of two bases, something that Puma used to do a lot as well uh, to confuse his opponents. And dropping the Twilight Council in that moment seemed like such a weird decision mm -hmm. because it wouldn't help him in defending, but actually Maza was not doing that as he's taking a, another additional base. So the decision by x -Lab was correct. Yeah. And now that Charge and Storm is going to be finished, that like eats this army composition alive, honestly. Yeah, and Archons are going to be so important because they exactly soak right. up so much damage from tanks. And look, he actually sees the third base in the top right-hand corner. It should be you mass up a ton of units, you go out and then take your third base uh, for x -Lab, And that's probably exactly what we're going to be seeing. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if you know, x -Lab just wins the game straight out right here just because his... Uh, his army is so much more mobile than his opponents. He has charge, he yeah. has the essential upgrades, he has the high Templars, 
He's looking to be in fantastic shape. I think with point defense drone as well, it's going to be pretty tough. He doesn't have Archons yet either. He really needs Archons. Yeah, Storm is going to be you great. You can feedback that, though. That is true, but... Oh, he's actually going to unseat right now with everything. Oh, oh this might be the worst time to do that. Wow, x is not going for it. I would have gone for that so fast. As soon as they see Chi Cheng's on Siege, it's like a yeah. money shot. Uh, now well. it's actually really tough to, to go into that battle. Uh, Ma Masa has quite a bit of money. It's like 1,000 minerals and also Command Center going up. So his army could have been a lot bigger than it actually is. A couple of Zealots are going to charge in. Is Excellent going to try to pick this fight? Oh, Not he yet. Careful. Maybe he's going to set up. I would love to see him setting up a flank with like 15 charges from here. Then I don't think this army can ever beat uh, yeah. the army of Hexler. But I do want to say the upgrades for... Axel aren't that great, really. Um, well he's he's, he's just working on 1-1, one, one, uh, whereas his opponent already has plus one up. Ooh, plus Stim one armor wasn't even ready yet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Stim is just so not ready. That 15 minute, 30 second Stim time. <laughs> uh, it's legendary. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, right now, I mean, Axav, I guess this is a playable, um, playable line where he just goes and takes staff control. Knowing that his opponent does have pretty, uh, I don't want to say bad, but it's not the most optimal army composition. So uh, I guess he can play for late game like this and just take the economic loss. But still, uh, a as we were talking about before, I would much rather prefer some sort of huge two base push. It's just so hard for Masa to uh, engage because he's going to have to unseat everything. Oh, oh Axlab is actually going to try to Whoa. attack. That's the best thing that could happen for Masa. Yeah, 1-1 one, one just finished and the high Templars, they're going to immediately oh. feed back. Nice storm goes down, but not really on the mass it's marines. Not be good enough. And I think you know Masa is actually going to lose this. Oh. Yeah, Masa's going to lose this. There's just too many classes still alive, and he doesn't have a good response to them. Uh, he doesn't have oh, enough bio army to chase, but I don't think he really lost that fight. I actually think he did quite okay. He's still 30 army supply ahead. That was pretty much how much he was ahead before the fight. All the high templars died, or at least well, a couple of them. Yeah. I think he should have pushed mm -hmm. in, actually, but I know he was so scared about the siege tanks. That's definitely something to be scared yeah. about. Uh, but still, I think Axlav kind of missed missed out on that, uh, that attack. But Ooh, he might that not miss out on dies. This. That's actually Ooh. the only reinforcing pylon that Axlav has over here. This is actually really good. He can go for the counterattack and just um, put down High Templars all over the place near his main. But oh. this is a little bit dangerous. I don't like this this attack from Axlav. Axlav is sort of trapped. Yeah. Exactly, he might like, be able to pick up the command center and uh, Orbital now. Oh. Orbital will live. Oh. Masa's a little bit sloppy with his Viking control. He did pick up one Colossus over here, but he's been losing a lot of Vikings throughout uh, the last three or four minutes. Yeah. And he didn't really get all that much for it. So in this position, I, I still do favor Axav's position ever so slightly, just because he has all the essential tech right now. He is getting his Chrono Boosted. Uh, upgrades pretty fast, but um, you know, it's still a difficult position for both these players. Masa is maxed though, but that that can be obviously very deceiving. Uh, oh, that probe did see that uh, little hit uh, squad over here, over here. entering uh, the third base from Axtar. He will be able to pick up perhaps a few probes. He's gonna pick oh. up a few stocks, maybe that high Templar. No, that's not going to work. But this does allow Masa to cross the map, so uh, yeah. the effort did not go up in vain. And Axlav just needs to just reconvene everything together. He actually merged. Oh my god, I think that's a mistake. He merged all of his high Templars in his main army. Doesn't have a single storm. Here come the ghosts. Oh. Wow, pretty good EMP. Wow. Well, it didn't really hit the Archons, but hit pretty much everything else. But Masa did lose both ghosts immediately. Mm -hmm. And the upgrades are actually looking pretty good for um, Axlav, though. 2-2 two -two is finished. Against 2-1 for Against 2-1, which is oh, Master's not army is a lot bigger. I really think if Master's able to really force the fight with all the tanks in a good position, of course, that's going to be a very hard issue. Yeah. Once more, ends up losing a Viking. His you know Viking count is so low. Yeah, though. that's the big problem. The Viking count is super, super low. That makes the Colossus obviously yeah. be so much more powerful. All Axlav has to do is max out to 200, 200, wait until his warp gates are actually up again so he can do another wave of Zealots and then push in. Yeah, I think the moment that X is maxed out, which is starting to become really close, he has the money to max out as well as soon as the gateways are of cooldown. Mm -hmm. I think he will be able to cross his army. He should set off a flank, a nice engagement. Then oh, everything should oh be possible. No, 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 no. Oh. He, got, he got baited. Sorry. Uh, but here we go. He's coming from the left-hand side. 
And uh, Argons are actually taking so much of the damage. Nice Storm goes down, and look at this. Masa just does not have the material to defend against this. The Colossus are way too powerful. Six Colossus down the, the field. Are you kidding me? That's way too much to have no Vikings out on the field. All these units get cleared out so easily, and all Axelab needs to do is just remove all those meta axes from the field. And uh, look Masa at this one icon. This basically one. cannot do anything. This icon could kill a lot of the oh, yeah, Two archons, actually. X is gonna straight away head over to this fort base over here from yeah. Massa on this right side. Nice blink there as well. And for the first time in a long time in this game, X is ahead and he's actually 35 army supply ahead. I don't see any way how Massa can keep this base alive. Yeah. He's producing four Vikings at a time, but I just feel it's a little too late. Yeah, it is. I mean, you cannot go, you, you can't engage an army with six Colossus and not have any Vikings yeah. out in the field. I mean, you need a way to actually isolate <laughs> those Colossus down so they stop doing all that damage because the sprays are just way too powerful against everything in the Terran arsenal. Now it's completely flopped. 150 supply from Masa, 200 supply for Axaf. He's just going to push in probably for the win right here. Indeed. And Masa is getting better all though, and his Viking count, uh, Viking count is going to be quite high. With nine Vikings, it's going to already look a lot better, but I don't think Axaf is going to give him the time for that. All those Zealots charging in. Great storm there as well. Vikings once more dying to the Archons and the Stalkers. And X is not pushing in yet, but he knows as long as he denies any fort base from Wasa, he's going to be in very good shape. He blinks forward, just picks off the rest of the units over here, and also notices the command center over on the left-hand side. And I love this, he gets Stalkers. A lot of players would not get Stalkers in positions. I love Stalkers just to reinforce the strength of those Colossus. Make yep. sure that they'll always stay alive, even at this end game stage when Stalkers are considered normally to be obsolete to, let's say, Archons or even Zealots at times. Uh, since Zealots can tank pretty well, but there's going to be an engagement no matter what. Masa just cannot, he doesn't have <laughs> the Viking count. You need like 24 Vikings if you want to be able to, not uh, 24. And maybe it's like also eight High Templars against two Ghosts right now. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, uh, just mass. Right. Although two EMPs can remove all the energy over there. Yeah, one EMP can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to happen, bro. <laughs> it's just not going to happen, bro. <laughs> Easily. Uh, SCVs, poor SCVs on the right-hand side. They are going to be absolutely mutilated. I always love this, man. When all the SCVs line up and Colossus are like zzz, zzz, and everything dies. It's my favorite moment. It's not my favorite, bro. You love it, too. I, I love it when I'm playing Paratos, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, uh, Massa's army supply is actually quite reasonable, uh, so the army supply type is a little bit deceiving, but the uh, army of Axelab is just so much bigger. Mana Massa calls GG, and Axelab already with his second win. And yeah, the and next matchup is going to be really cool since the next game is going to be Destiny oh versus Axelab. I oh love it, wow. Steven Bono. I actually played uh, Steven Bono on my Smurf account recently. Uh, did you win? I did not. He's terrible, man. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding, Steven. I love you. I you know, let's though. talk a little bit more about this previous game. Yep. As we pointed out, I think several times what was really important is that I think Mazda did a lot of stuff right, and his army did look pretty scary. And after that first engagement on the right top, I actually thought it was still going quite well for him. He's still 30, 35 army supply ahead. The biggest problem was just that he kept losing Vikings. Even when that one factory was trying to give him vision, yeah. he lost three Vikings for no reason. After that, he kept losing one, two Vikings. And this is one big problem, because he didn't have like a scary Viking count. He couldn't force Axelab to take a fight that maybe he didn't want to, because Vikings would fly in, uh, get like eight shots off when the Colossus fly out again. Now every time he had to stim bio units, and those bio units, they kept getting shots from the Colossus. So yeah. the army was already so much weaker before the fight actually started because he wasn't able to do the damage with Vikings. Yeah. So he was doing it with bio units, which just didn't work out. Yeah, not only that, you can see how many Marines and Marauders are actually in this army. And because they were so weakened, um, he actually emphasized so many medevacs. Yeah. And there was a position where all of his units were super, super low in health. So he made like eight uh, medevacs all together. That's a ton of gas that you're not going to deal with the Colossus. Uh, yeah, obviously, that as we said, so I mean, decisive. obviously, tanks can just like speed up. <laughs> Fortunately, not. That would be sick <laughs> and do damage. So he had to stim all the time because he exactly. didn't have those Vikings to get the shots off. Anyways, nice game. Very, very well played by Xlev once more. We'll be right back with more NESO action here at the with Axelab versus Destiny. It's going to be awesome. Stay tuned.